Hey guys, um, just wanted to give you a, a quick five minutes on one of the new features inside of Inventor Pro 2017, uh, which is Shape Generator. Um, really exciting new functionality, which allows us to take uh, a design apart um, and, and optimize that. But uh, whilst we've had optimization tools in Inventor before, this really takes things to the next level, uh, looking at generative design. Um, more on exactly what that means in a second. Um, but it's been around since uh, Inventor 2016 R3, um, which was a subscription release. It's out of the box now in 2017, um, and it's really easy to use, especially for if any of you have used the standard FEA tools before. So um, let's take a look. We have a, a simple component, um, and we're just going to go straight up to the, the ribbon and choose Shape Generator. Um, now, really easy functionality. If you've used FEA, um, you feel right at home because we're assigning materials. We already have one assigned in this case. Uh, and then we're creating fixed constraints or, or pinned or frictionless constraints. In this case, we're going to fix this face here. Press OK. And then we're going to come in and put a remote force. We're going to place the remote force in this case. This is just a, a bracket, so we're going to place this remote force on the inside of this hole. Uh, and then we're going to use our, um, our remote point and our vector components to say that we want that, uh, let's say, minus 120 in the Y. And then let's place that using vector components in the FX, maybe minus 4,000. What that's going to do is it's going to take a force in this direction on essentially what would be within that, uh, within that hole. So let's press OK on there. Um, we could go in and add further forces if we want to, but uh, the most important thing for us on this design is making sure that certain region, regions are preserved. And what we mean by that is we have this spherical face here, and this is important for us and important for the design and how this connects to other elements. So we can take this area and basically use either these freeform tools or these type-ins to be able to say that we need to have an area uh, which is um, spherical in shape, 75 by 30 that remains. That's important that that area remains and it stays the shape that it is currently. We then want to apply that and do exactly the same thing on this side and we know that there is an important element within this area and again I'm just going to drag that roughly back to the, uh, the rear of the part. Let's just say that we've got uh, about 88 millimeters there um, by about 40. Maybe we want to include this, um, this radius as part of that as well so we could go up to 125. Press OK. This gives us these envelopes, if you like, these uh, areas which Shape Generator will not change. I'm going to go into my Shape Generator settings now. Um, and basically, it, it will look at the part that you've got, and it says that you have 100, uh, um, sorry, 13.9 kilograms, which is our current weight. And we can choose to, to have a target. That can be a percentage, uh, an actual mess, or it can be um, uh, um, based on a, a minimum member size. We're going to say that we want to try and reduce this by 60% weight. We can then say, um, whilst it's doing that, we want to reduce the, the courses of the mesh down to two. Um, the finer your mesh, the longer the simulation will take to run, but the more accurate or the better your results. The more cores your mesh, it will be quicker, but it might be um, a little bit less accurate. Now, I'm just going to press Generate Shape. And this will just take a couple of minutes or so, but um, whilst this is going, what Shape Generator is allowing you to do is use the, the computerized mathematics to, to look at the, the inputs that we've given it, so these two preserved regions, and look at the general geometry that we have of the shape, and essentially tell me what areas are being um, stressed, what areas are critical and important based on what we have. Um, and, and what we'll see in a second when this finishes is we'll get a result with a mesh which shows us the exact areas that we need to focus on. So I'm just going to pause the video just while this finishes. It's just going to take a couple of minutes um, and I'll bring it back online once it's done. Okay, so that's finished. Um, it took roughly two minutes or so on my um, Precision 5510. Um, so it's, it's pretty quick. Um, but what you can see is this now gives me a mesh. This mesh is not um, usable, let's say. It's there for a reference, um, although we can get it out to STL. Um, but this is basically saying, great, with the, the inputs you've given me about preserving these regions and having this remote force of um, 4,000 newtons, um, these are the areas that are seeing stress. 
the areas that do not have a mesh basically aren't seeing any stress or, or no high areas of stress, which basically tells us that we can literally come in and cut out these areas. Okay, So we can really dramatically reduce how this part looks uh, and reduce material and reduce cost and potentially time to manufacture by using this. Um, so once it's run, um, we can come in and promote shape. And what you would usually do while I'm just promoting this to my part file is you'd usually do this probably in line with an FEA simulation that you already have. So you would use the standard um, FEA stress analysis tools to run this stress analysis that I've just shown you against your standard part. This would give you the, the stresses that you have. You would then copy that simulation and do the same simulation again using Shape Generator. Um, and then you would basically follow what Shape Generator is giving you and then run the simulation once more and that would show you that you've got a valid part or a part that is um, performing the same with much less information or much less geometry. So by promoting this shape, um, we can see that we now have the, the mesh alongside our 3D model. So it's a little bit flickery when you zoom around because it's basically overlapping geometry. But what this gives me the ability to do is uh, simply start a sketch inside Inventor. I'm going to grab the topmost face here and choose to sketch on that face. Let's just slice our graphics now um, and do this really quickly from the video's perspective just to keep it nice and short for you guys. I'm just going to use a mixture of, uh, of lines and just draw these rough shapes with line circles and then we'll put a couple of fillets on there as well. We're basically coming in and choosing to, um, to do a standard extrusion. This extrusion will allow us to cut out this material that Shape Generator has essentially told us is not important to our design. So we can come in and, and, um, and, and put standard constraints on there. It's a standard sketch guys so you know I don't need to tell you how to sketch, you all know that. Um, but we can come in here and, and work with those. Uh, I'm just going to do this very, very roughly in this example. We're going to say that we want to uh, finish the sketch at that point, and we're going to say that we want to extrude all of those profiles as a cut, and we want to take them all the way through our model. So I'm just going to tick both directions just to make sure I am picking up all of my geometry. And then we can press the tick. From there, we can see that we have our mesh within our browser. I'm just going to right-click and visibility on that mesh to get rid of it. And we can see that we now have our part with those pieces of geometry removed. Again, it's a standard part now, guys, so we can come in here and add our, uh, our standard fillets, other features that we might want to add. So I'm just going to come and put some 3D fillets on here um, in and around these components just to make them a little bit smoother, make them a little bit, a little bit nicer. Could have done that on the sketch. In essence, if this was a real example, you would have spent more time in the sketch following that mesh around but in this case let's just come in and maybe just drag those all to about 20 millimeters just to make them nice and smooth once i've done that let's just take the sharp edge away and just say that we want to grab those loops around the top and the underside and just put a small fillet on there inventor's going to complain so let's just drop that down quickly before it complains any further and crashes my system and let's just put a five mil fillet around the top edge there Okay, and we have our finished part. So that's a really quick workflow where we can take a part and optimize it. Now, the likelihood is we could have, through testing, found out that these bits of material could have been removed before, but we wouldn't have been able to do it so easy. We'd have had to take material out manually, simulate it, take more material out, simulate it, take less material out, simulate it, until we got our optimized results or use the parametric tools inside of stress analysis. Using Shape Generator, we can really quickly use the computer to give us a mesh to say, hey, you know what, try this mesh. We can then make that mesh, go back into our stress analysis environments and see how that plays up compared to our original parts. It's very exciting, it's really new, um, it's really modern technology and it does allow you to create some really interesting designs um, which you might not have, uh, have thought, of, thought about before. Um, a lot of this as well is, is fantastic for um, additives and 3D printing because you can get some really nice mesh based um, 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 meshes which are, are really good for 3D printing. So any of you out there doing 3D printing, you can also give this a go and get some really unique results. Um, so that's all I wanted to show you today. Just a really quick overview of, of how this works. Any questions then let us know. 
uh, and next time perhaps we'll go into a little bit more uh, more depth and say how we can uh, or look at how we can take an existing stress analysis or FEA analysis that you have and then convert that into a shape generator to be able to optimize your parts. Hope that's been useful. Catch you next time. Cheers, guys.